Welcome to the party. I'm Sam Ekstrom of Locked On Sports Minnesota. In free agency this offseason, teams will not be looking for curb appeal. They're looking for Kirk appeal. I'm Luke Braun of Locked On Vikings. And let's just pencil him into Atlanta and call it a day. Luke Inman at Luke underscore Spinman. Swapping out Stephon Diggs for Justin Jefferson and Cam Bynum. Keeps looking better and better by the day. In Rick, we trust. That and more coming up on today's Minnesota football party. Let's do it. Locked on sports, Minnesota podcast. It's endless Minnesota Vikings talk with the diverse voices of your local experts. A brand new week on the Minnesota football party. Welcome in. It's Vikings talk for an hour every Monday and Thursday here on Locked on sports, Minnesota. It's me, Sam Ekstrom. It's the Lukes today. We hope to hear from Arif Hassan along the way. Thank you for watching us in the Locked On Sports Minnesota YouTube channel. You can also catch us on that 24-7 YouTube live stream. Please subscribe, get notified when we're doing a show. Also hear us wherever you get your podcasts on the Locked On Vikings audio feed. Also available, Sirius XM, Amazon Fire, Roku, lots of ways to watch and listen. Talking Vikings football today, Kirk Cousins, free agent. Is there a Kirk appeal around the league because of all of these change of scenery veterans finding new homes. We're going to dive into that. We're also doing a series on QB targets in the draft today. It's maybe the number one pick, Caleb Williams. And we're going to look at free agency defensive tackles that the Minnesota Vikings could be interested in as well. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free. At LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnNFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right, Luke Inman, Luke Braun. Once again, I'm Sam Ekstrom. We will touch, too, on the divisional playoff games. But first, let's talk about our favorite quarterback, Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is a veteran. He has put up good statistics. He's very Matt Stafford-ish. Let's, let's, let's just overgeneralize here. Well, look at some of the quarterbacks that have had success of late in the NFL. Change of scenery veterans. Matt Stafford wins the Super Bowl. Jared Goff might win a Super Bowl. Baker Mayfield rejuvenated. He goes and makes the second round with the Buccaneers. Even Geno Smith you could classify sort of in that group. Does that trend in the NFL make Kurt Cousins more appealing on the open market? Because this is the list I put together, and it might not be comprehensive, but these are the teams I think that could be interested in Kirk Cousins based on that fact. Patriots, Steelers, Raiders, Broncos, Buccaneers, Falcons. And there's a couple other maybes out there too. But if you want a high-end, change-of-scenery veteran, Kirk Cousins might be the best available. Does that increase his market? Luke Braun, what do you think? I don't think you need it to increase his market. Uh, I think all those teams were going to be interested anyways. Um, Teams don't think the way that we think here in, in the bowels of sports media where we're like, where medium is bad is worse than bad. Like teams are okay with, with what Kirk cousins does. And they, they like that he is mechanically textbook. They like that he has the arm strength to hit everything on the field. They like that he is reads off the teleprompter. That'll do exactly what your OC says. That's great for teams. They love that. That's why he keeps getting money. That's that's why he keeps getting money, regardless of who the offensive coordinator is. They all like him. Uh, so I don't think you need this like weird macro idea of like, well, the way to win a Super Bowl is blah blah blah. The way to like, I don't I don't think you need that. He, He's good enough at quarterback to get interest from teams. I think it's truly as simple as that. Yeah, no, you make a lot of good points. I mean, obviously, no more important position in sports than quarterback. He's going to be coveted for sure. But just pulling up that that draft order that you just mentioned, Sam, and just who's going to be in the market for a quarterback. I'm just going to play devil's advocate here a little bit, just just mm-hmm. for conversation's sake. And it's like once you get past the top three, Chicago, Washington, New England, who could all take a quarterback. Then it's Atlanta, like you mentioned. OK, you got some Bill Belichick and Cousins rumors there. After that, though, I mean, you could make a case and argue who's going to target the 36 year old coming off the Achilles injury that's probably not going to play for anything less than 35 million I would think because the only teams I see that need a quarterback upgrade that are also in this kind of win now window mode 
Atlanta. And then who? Who else did you mention? I mean, Denver, probably not. Vegas. Mm -hmm. Kirk going to move his family to Sin City? I don't think so. Saints, <laughs> uh, Saints, they're tied to Carr for two more years. Yeah. Rams, they're tied to Stafford for two more years minimum. Tampa, they're bringing back Baker Mayfield for at least one more year, if not two. Pittsburgh, even with at minimum two years left of, of Pickett on his rookie deal, three if they want to do the fifth-year option. I think outside of Atlanta and then maybe New England, who again – it just doesn't feel like a win now situation with a first year head coach and knowing probably one of either Jaden Daniels or Drake May is going to be staring them in the face. I just don't see a lot of maybe realistic ideal landing spots for Kirk right now, just given it's a bridge situation. It is. It could be a bridge situation for sure. Yeah, no, you're right. I, I, I think, I think you can talk yourself into that for sure. I mean, he would be one of the best bridge situation quarterbacks that would land on the market that you know the league has seen in, in at least the last handful of years it just doesn't happen a lot so um actually i'm going to take a quick quick sharp right here a quick poll i'm genuinely curious about this i was just thinking about this this morning mm -hmm. do you guys think kirk cousins is going to be ready week one because if you're going to spend that much money on a quarterback not only do you want him ready week one is he going to be healthy enough for training camp is he going to be ready for training camp and all those things. If you're going to pay a guy 35, 40 million to come in and either be a bridge or be the guy to hopefully take you over the hump and take you to the playoffs. Again, I'm just looking at all these teams, two or three make a ton of sense. And one of those includes the Vikings, but um, I get your point, Sam. I think it's a good question. Teams have had good luck with, with a change of senior at quarterback the last few years, but I don't know, given Kirk's situation, the age, the injury, the money he's going to command. I don't know if there's going to be more than three or four, maybe five, I guess, which is still plenty uh, realistic suitors for his services when it's all said and done. Come March. Buccaneers is interesting to me because they got to the second round with Baker, nine and eight. They obviously won a Super Bowl doing this with Brady. And yep. Yep. They elevated Baker's play, but probably capped it out. They're probably not going to get a better Baker season than they got. And that was only a one-year deal. There's no, there is no contractual commitment to him. I wonder if they would view Kirk as an upgrade on Baker. That's a wild card for me. Um, but I like your point, Luke, about how some of those teams I mentioned they'd much rather invest in the high-end first-round rookie and probably wouldn't want that expensive of a bridge. They would probably want more of a Baker bridge if they if they did the bridge route. Yeah, Baker, three million against the cap, seven million dollar deal total. I mean, you're going to spend five times that minimum to go get Kirk. Mm -hmm. But you're right. Yeah, but what is Baker worth? That right? Like Baker's probably That's true. increased his stock. Yeah. Oh, for sure. No, you're you're absolutely right. I, that was I a, think they go with Baker. I, I do. I, well. I think they dance with the devil. They know. Um, <laughs> but like, that's a really interesting thing about his Achilles too, because if you whether or not you like think he's going to be ready by week one, you don't get, you got to make this decision before you have any idea. It's, like it's, I have no idea. It's, it's I tough. don't know his Achilles, right? I don't know what the stem cells did, but like <laughs> he didn't, wasn't cam Akers used as, as an example of the healing term granted different body type, different person, but cam Akers tore his Achilles and he was ready the following year, I believe. Have and what week did he get hurt again? Do we know about the same time you're saying? Because Brian yeah, O'Neill is the one I, I keep, she keeps popping into my mind. Yeah, what, Brian O'Neill missed. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, missed a lot of camp, right? Missed almost all camp. I think he was ready mm -hmm. for week one versus the Bucks, though. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. And but again, you're signing a quarterback that is so vital compared to a right tackle, right? That you can go through OTAs and training camp without, and I'm shelling out all this money, and he's supposed to. Unless he's a bridge guy, which does Kirk want to go be a bridge guy? I'm not sure if he's got his options to choose from. I, yeah, but, I, don't, I don't know um, how many options he has. You you, you, you right. do kind of have to say, yeah, I'm going to give you this. Is, I don't think he makes 35 mil. Like, okay. I don't think anybody says I'm going to give you 35 million to miss camp and maybe not be ready and maybe only get two years of you. Like mm -hmm. I get mm -hmm. very little team control. I, I don't know how much say Kirk Cousins has it, in this. It, it feels I, like he's a bridge. Like he's a bridge no matter what. Like whatever home he is a bridge because yeah. of his age, it's just a yeah. question of whether he's a bridge with his replacement in the building or a bridge with his replacement not found yet. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. And that just depends on what that team does in the draft, which is why like, I don't think a team like the Patriots is like out of the question because then it gives them the ability to be like, oh, you know, we only wanted Caleb Williams uh, and he went first overall. We're done. 
we'll, right. we'll just go take, you know, a great wide receiver, something like that. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense. I think I keep circling back to Atlanta because, uh, again, just kind of a wide open division right now. Me NFC too. in general is kind of wide open. Feels like an optimistic owner and coach, whoever the new coach ends up being, um, could see that as, okay, this is here for the taking. Let's go get a guy like Kirk. And they could still draft another quarterback as well. But um, I would think if, if a team like that, with all those offensive weapons, with how improved the defense was this year, with how weak that division is just in general compared to the other seven divisions in the league, I would think they would probably build around him outside of Atlanta though. And you're right. Maybe new England bridge situation, whatever that looks like. I don't see a lot of win now teams that are going to be in the services for Kirk, but I think the two big things and Luke, you touched on the other point, the money, how much is he going to command? I threw out 35. You think maybe less. I don't think that's unrealistic by any means. Very curious though, what that looks like. That's mm-hmm. a big wild card. And then the injury making those decisions in March before you even know, uh, if he's going to be ready again for training camp and OTAs and week one and all that stuff, that's really tough. And somebody's going to have to gamble and, and what that gamble looks like. A lot of different variables going on there for sure. No doubt like about Atlanta. it. Um, I, I like Atlanta yeah. for him because they feel as though they have underachieved. They fire Arthur Smith. They're not going to go forward with like Desmond Ritter and Taylor Heineke and this crap right. like at quarterback. And and I think if you ask the Falcons, why did you underachieve? Why, you know, why did all this talent not do more? They would say, well, it was quarterback. We didn't have a serious quarterback and we didn't have the right uh, head coach in place, right? They're going to get their new head coach. And, and I think they are a team that would feel like getting somebody that's, you know, not Mahomes, but just a serious, you know, we don't need to trade up everything for Caleb Williams mm-hmm. to get, you know, we, we still have Drake London and Kyle Pitts. We've got a foundation here. We just need somebody who Bijan can play Robinson. point guard. Great offensive right. line. Yeah, I mean, they just offense. need somebody who who thinks of themselves as a point guard. I've got the best youth pastor for you. <laughs> There's the the wife, the wife's uh, connection with the family with Kirk. Last time Belichick saw Kirk in person, Kirk hung like 300 yards, three TDs, and 33 points on him. So yeah. I I don't know how that relationship it makes so works. much sense. I would but, love to see it. Uh, um, that Kirk Cousins be, with that a defensive be. head coach. We've never seen it before. Well, um, yeah, what could go wrong? <laughs> Another quarterback angle today is Caleb Williams worth the obscene price he will cost in a trade up plus divisional round thoughts after this on the Minnesota Football Party. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Uh, LinkedIn Jobs helps your business find the right candidates faster. of uh, companies that post on LinkedIn jobs, they find a quality candidate within 24 hours. Uh, Every time you enter the new year, running a small business, you're wearing a lot of hats, you're busy, you're frazzled, preparing taxes. I don't know what you might be doing, but you probably don't have a lot of time to sit down and sift through resumes and do hour long interviews with 15 different candidates. You need the tools to help you write those job descriptions to help the cream rise to the top. And that's what LinkedIn Jobs does for you. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NFL, linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thanks for watching the Minnesota football party today. We are back. We're going to talk about Caleb Williams and the trade-up cost. But first, I got to get these guys' thoughts on divisional round weekend. And I want to start with this. And I, I want I wish we had some like small violin or sad violin music to play because I just wanna I just wanna give the utmost sympathy to Packer fans. And I just wanna tell you how <laughs> no, sorry what? I am. I listen, <laughs> listen, Luke. I want to tell them how sorry I am that they, in the, since they won the last Super Bowl, how they were destroyed by Eli Manning as the number one seed oh, at Lambeau, see. how they had their hearts ripped out by Colin Kaepernick twice, uh, how they botched an onside kick and blew an inexplicable lead at Seattle, how they had the doors blown off them by both San Francisco and Atlanta in conference title games, how they lost in overtime to Larry Fitzgerald and Arizona after completing a Hail Mary to Jeff Janis, 
how they lost a divisional round at home to San Francisco when they scored only 10 points, how they kicked a field goal with less than three minutes to go inside the 10 and lost to Tampa Bay, how they lost a win and in last year against Detroit, and then how they lost at San Francisco when Jordan Love outplayed Brock Purdy. I just want to tell Packer fans how sorry I am that all that happened. I don't know if two uh, fourth quarter interceptions can be called outplaying him. Right. Well, that's well, that's fair. kind of cost the your meme. team the game there, big guy. <laughs> the yeah. Did that did that ball just come out of his hand a little wonky? I mean, that was so far off. Well, yeah, he threw across close. his body far it, style. Of course, I it did. The, I think the decision was a little wonky. He was trying to thread an impossible needle. There was no way that needle yeah, there was, was getting thread. No chance. And that that guy just yeah. like was not there. He just kind of yeah. He just threw. That it was away. a Mullins. That was pure Mullins. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's first down. I, I'm pretty sure I said it on this show last week after the Packers beat Dallas and we were all freaking out. Everybody's going, oh my God, the NFC North is going to be so good forever now. And I think what I said was Jordan Love is hot, but it's all about consistency. Can he go four games without throwing a bunch of interceptions and throwing the game away? Turns out, nope. I still... Yeah, uh... Far, far flashbacks for sure, right? I mean, Bosa was in his face, but far, with Favre, it was like, dude, you you can you don't even need to run. You can walk for eight yards. And I know you had Bosa in his face, but yeah, if you can just wiggle around Bosa, easier said than done, I get it. But you just wiggle around Bosa, man. You got a lot of grass there. If not, throw it's the first ball down, away. Throw it away, man. Yeah. Throw it away. You got two timeouts, 52 seconds left, man. Um, yeah, that's a tough one to watch for sure. And now all those thoughts creep into your head if you're a Packer fan, like... All right. Was it just a weak NFC? Did we just get hot at the right time? Youngest roster in the league. A lot of things to obviously build off of. But do we still know for sure Jordan Love is the guy for the next 10 years? Do we know that for sure? I, I don't think that they'll have any question about it. But that's that's going to be kind of the thing now for the next however long that they want to put up with, with Jordan Love. However long that marriage is, mm -hmm. whether it's a decade or less. Mm -hmm. The question will be, okay, here we are. It's January. We're in the playoffs can we string together four of these without a meltdown game? And Jordan Love had a few meltdown. He had that Giants game, that Raiders game. He had, th he had three interception disaster classes all over the place. Uh, so can you string together four of them at the end of the season without that? And that's kind of my criticism of Kirk Cousins is consistency, right? You'll have yeah. games like the San Francisco game all over the season, and then you'll also have games where you know he throws a pick sixes on the goal line. <laughs> Um, it, it, that's how you have to win the Super Bowl is consistency, right? You cannot just have, you can't have a peaky Valley quarterback mm -hmm. because you need to win four games in a row or three. If you're the one seed, uh, it really hard to do that without that kind of consistency. So that's what, that's what Jordan love needs to get when Jordan love is putting together those games over and over and over and over and over again. And it's like eight, nine, 10 of them in a row. That's that's when I'm like, ah, all right, they did it again, and they're going to be 13 and four every year, like they were with Rodgers. So the remind me if I'm wrong, the Packers comped Love for the final two years of his rookie deal, so that he's now entering a contract year, correct? Probably wanting an extension. Uh, that uh, sounds check, right. Let me look it up. See. Check Let me, me see. Check me on it. Yep. I just I would I would love to see the number like we talked about like there's so yes. much intrigue around Kirk's number. What's the love number right after one year right. of a QBR roller coaster? It's a great question and, here. And yeah, albeit making some unworldly throws the past few weeks, including sure. one or two in that San Francisco game, stuff that most quarterbacks can't do. What's his number? Is he going to to sign an obscene like Daniel Jonesy? kind of deal off of one good year or one good stretch of games. Um, I And like we talked about, might, maybe even last week, like there is still a high, I think, risk with Jordan Love because of the inconsistency, because of this, it's a small sample size league. So if the Packers go and sign Jordan Love four years, 160, I think that's pretty great if you're a Minnesota Vikings fan, um, that they're going to be that committed to that quarterback. I think it's going to be way more than that. Wow. wow. 160? Really? Four years? That's that's what Daniel Jones got. There's, I don't think there's going to be the same hesitation with Jordan Love. I, I saw uh, Brad Spielberger, who does contract projections, yeah. say 50 a year. Woo! 
Ooh, man. I, I mean, it's going to be wrong, a mega dude. deal. Don't get me wrong. Right. Every year, these numbers surprise us. The cap goes up. This is, uh, yeah. I mean, that's the trend, right? That's what's going to happen. That's the deal. But- Two years ago, $50 million on one player was unconscionable. It is no right. longer unconscionable. Right. And Absolutely. guess what? Two years from now, $70 million for a quarterback is like going to happen. Dude, that's... Like, it's a th- it's just how this works. We just have to kind of constantly how reevaluate how we, how we feel about these numbers. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, so so fifty million a year is a pretty obscene cost. Well, how about like five first round picks for Caleb Williams, um, because that's also a pretty ob- obscene cost that a team <laughs> may be tempted to pay if you're I think the Minnesota you're not even allowed Vikings. To do that. I don't think I you think, are. Either. Is, I think it caps off at four. It? Is it four <laughs> okay. years out? I was wondering. It's like, that. Or it's, it yeah, out? it's like three years in the so, future and then including this year or something like so that. So 2028. Or maybe it's only three. I don't know the, the rule off the top of my head, but yeah, I don't think you could do five. <laughs> four years. You do like three whole drafts or whatever. Including this year or four years out after this draft? Like, that's Yeah, that's what I don't know. Okay. And Just he good. wants team equity, which is a whole nother conversation. But yeah, like he wants a groundbreaking kind of rookie yes. agreement. Dude, um, I, I looked up the amount of times a team has actually traded up to number one for a quarterback. Fling out a number, what you think. Uh, the entire history of the draft in the NFL, how many times has a team traded up to number one for a quarterback? Any guess? Well, la- last year. There's, yep. Last, last year, year there's golf. There's golf. Yep. There's, I can't imagine there's more than like one or two more. Ugh, Michael Vick, that's it. Michael Vick, Three yeah, times. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I Falcons. Think they like third, or they were third. Uh, Falcons were at five. They moved up with the Chargers who ended up moving back and taking LT and then like Tim Dwight and some change and everything else. But three times, that's it. It just surprised me how few that was. I mean, a lot of trades for quarterbacks, a lot of trading up for quarterbacks, a lot of trading up into the top five, a lot of times, number two, Ryan Leaf and uh, Sam Darnold or whatever it is, you know, Zach Wilson. There's a lot of those situations, but um, not as many as I would have thought. And it makes sense, right? Like a team's picking number one, they're probably atrocious and they know if they're ever going to take a quarterback, never going to be a better time. Got to pull the trigger. Um, And you know, as far as Caleb goes here, Sam, a little segue here, like we make every draft class out to be, you know, the greatest draft class of all time. And I know this year's group of quarterbacks, it's super solid. It's very deep, especially at the top, the first eight, nine guys, but in general, the amount of ammo it costs to move all the way up is so steep that even if you hit on the guy, you're still going to have a lot of pressure on finding new ways to surround that guy with the talent and the support he needs to develop and get better every year without all those first, second, third round picks. And that's why it's such a, I think it's a really tough move to pull off and be successful from. And that's why you don't see it a lot, but um, Hey, Devil's advocate, you hit on a generational quarterback, who's getting who? Nothing else matters as far as roster construction. I mean, there's there's a lot less pressure on yourself if you hit on that quarterback. And as far as Caleb goes, I think he is an elite blue chip quarterback prospect. I think scouts and coaches are going to have him, especially the media and all the mock drafts. You're going to hear him. He's around the same tier if you stacked them all together in the Trevor Lawrence, uh, Joe Burrow type of tier. But um You know, I just think it's going to cost so much here, guys, from 11 to 1. And I don't know why I play this game with myself, but I was sitting there looking at the draft order. If the Vikings win one less game, do you know where they'd be picking? One less game. Six. Six. They'd be picking six. If Josh Dobbs only pulls off one more miracle. Now, you can go the other way and say if they win one more game, they're picking like 17. 18, something crazy. It's a huge mm-hmm. spectrum. It's a huge swing. But um, from 11 to 1, boy, I look at the Panthers. And again, yeah, you're That's taking true. a home run swing, man. I mean, 32 teams, only one team wins it. You got to do some things different. You got to take some risks. Got to take some big swings. You look at Carolina, though. If you miss Carolina, and if, this is if Bryce Young doesn't work out, which obviously not heading in the right direction right now. Um, they're toast for like four or five years. They, they just have no ammo. They can't build around him right now. Um, and it's a tough situation to be in. So if you're asking if the Vikings should move all the way up to number one to get them with so many holes on the roster the way it is now and how much it would cost to move that far up, I mean, again, we're talking three first minimum and then probably a lot of change on top. I just think that would set them back so far with the roster management standpoint for the next four or five years. But again, I don't know. I keep I keep going both ways here, guys. It, it, Devil's Ave, if you hit on the Caleb Williams and he pans out, in a Kevin O'Connell offense with Justin Jefferson, Jordan Addison, TJ Hawkinson, two bookend tackles, draft another running back on day three. 
who knows, man, that's an ideal landing spot for any quarterback, especially a young rookie quarterback to come in and maybe hit the ground running a lot faster than a lot of other number one picks that are on terrible rosters and terrible offenses and terrible teams. Mm -hmm. So I keep going back and forth. Ultimately, I don't think it's going to happen. I think, again, uh, the cost to get all the way up to one from 11 uh, is just too steep. It's a lot. Uh, I can calm you down a little bit. Yeah, uh, Luke, because I'm pretty do. sure if they had lost another game, they would have been eighth, not six. Oh, I thought it was seven because of uh, six or seven. And I, I'm pretty out. sure they had tiebreakers on like everyone. So Got they would it. have had it, wasn't it goes to like schedule. conference record and stuff. It wasn't strength um, to schedule. I think they had if it's too. head to head, then you're right. Or tiebreakers, you're right. If it's just strength of schedule, like when you pull up Tankathon and they yeah. just show you the strength of schedule. Vikings at 509, I think, would have moved up to 6 and 11, 509. So I think it doesn't, I think they changed it. So it's oh, conference, right? Okay. It's like normal tiebreakers. Okay. But I don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure they would have been eighth. Got it. Okay. Um, Six either eight, way, I either mean, way. you're quibbling over two, three spots here, two, three spots there. Well, that's Leapfrog in Atlanta, though. And Atlanta mm -hmm. potential. They'll have Kirk. Now. It's fine. Uh, that's they right. We already established that. Yeah. That's right. My bad. My bad. <laughs> that's right. Next. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't think that he's worth, I kind of think that he's a big giant trap that the Chicago bears are laying. If Let's I'm the bears, so, if I'm Ryan Poles. I am leaking every single thing about how excited every executive is about Caleb Williams and how everybody's calling the bears and everything. I want someone to give me a haul. And honestly, I'm directing, I, I'm directing all my attention at new England and Washington and trying to get them to try to leapfrog each other uh, and get up to one with me. I'll move down a little bit and then do whatever. I, I do not think that they should take Caleb Williams because he just kind of seems like they're going back to Justin Fields as a rookie. It's like you already just like suffered so much to try to get him to develop even a little like see it through. But I don't know. I, I don't love it with Caleb Williams as much as everybody else does. I like, I, I get it and I see the exciting highlights and the runaround stuff, but you don't get away with that in the NFL, the way no. that he runs and scrambles, no. he'll get killed. He played um, out of structure so much. And that offense didn't do him a lot of favors as far as it, like, like, what is the, the NFL, offensive structure, right? It's triple option. NFL. It's shotgun play action, RPOs, that kind of stuff. And, and you, there are offenses in the NFL that work that way. Like that's mm -hmm. a style. Look at the Eagles, look at the bears, look at, um, look at the chiefs. Those, those are all quarterbacks that do that. And Hey, two or three of them have done pretty well. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I think for me, if you're drafting Caleb Williams, you have to be in that offense. You, I think I don't, I don't want to make Caleb Williams be an under center quarterback. I think that's stupid. Uh, I'm sure he could learn it, but why? Why would you bother? Right? Just be a shotgun team. Um. So if you're not comfortable being a shotgun team, I'm not sure if, like, I don't think Kevin O'Connell wants to do that. Right. Like I, that sort of feels at odds. He have to kind of make that decision of, OK, I've got this guy in the building now. Do I change everything about what I think about offense for the long haul forever? It's one thing to say, ah, we got Josh Dobbs in the building. We got to, you know, tailor something around him. It's another thing to say, OK, for the next five years, I'm not an under center coach anymore. Does he want to do that or do we just go with someone else? Right. <laughs> Especially and, and there's a lot costs, of options here. And you know, there's a lot of options in this class too. Pick your flavor. There's a lot of different. Exactly. Um, there's you, you can find what you, what you're looking for. And especially if it's going to cost three first round picks to go up. Well, why not let somebody else pay that big old price tag? And let's take the guys that they pass on who it, it, I think have every chance in the world to be better anyways. Um, I, I don't think you need to go crazy for Caleb Williams. There's a market to this, right? Uh, if, in 2019, when it was Kyler Murray and like dudes, then it would cost three whole drafts to move up for Kyler Murray. You were never going to do it. Arizona mm -hmm. wasn't going to do it. That was that was the most valuable the first round pick has ever been because there was one quarterback. Uh, there are like six quarterbacks. <laughs> Just take a different guy. You don't need to yeah. go crazy for the difference between Jaden Daniels and, mm -hmm. and Caleb Williams. Yeah, there's a good chance that that guy might be better anyways. Like you're, you're it's all probabilistic, right? Mm -hmm. And then the, yeah, the last right. thing is uh, I looked at, at I looked this up and because of all the Tom Brady stuff, apparently the league has like kind of declared like, hey, players aren't allowed to have equity. <laughs> like that's a thing, <laughs> at least according that. to Florio. Right. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're not allowed to do that. It, it's, that's interesting that he would like that. And I guess so would Aaron Rodgers, but I, you, you can't. 
it, it'd be an interesting move by the Bears if they trade out of the pick, get a haul, and then still like they trade back within the first top ten picks and still take a quarterback, not Caleb Williams. That'd be very interesting. That would so be Justin, such an indictment of Caleb Williams. <laughs> I know. Because well, they're one but, of the teams that feels set up for him because they've got a quarterback that is also, you know, probably should be in the shotgun a lot, a quarterback that's famous for his running, you know, a, a quarterback with a, a lot of the same habits that Justin Fields had coming out. Why you got again, dance with the devil, you know, why would you spend your first overall pick kind of on a lateral move? Like it feels like it would be a lateral move. To well, to, to, I know uh, what a lot of people are going to say to that argument, which I get the point. It's, it's about the money. It's about clearing the, whatever fields is going to cost you for the next five years and the guaranteed money and all Jesus that to Lord. reset the cap. But um, have we had this on something eventually? My have, God, the goal is to win. Uh, right, the Bears no, are just I, sitting in limbo forever. Like you can't <laughs> compete. Have we, right back. I know I missed last week. Have we had this conversation yet? I know it's way out there, but I just want you guys this quick two cents, thirty second elevator pitch on it. First of all, what's Justin Fields' trade value? What's he going to go for? I, I, it feels like all over the map. Mel Kiper goes on ESPN last week and says, maybe Atlanta trades the seventh overall pick for him. Get out of here, dude. Whoa. Seems like a second or third, maybe a day two pick. And second then and third, I think is what I saw somewhere. Second and third. And then yeah. uh, uh, just because it's always a long off season and this is going to get flung out there, Justin Fields to the Vikings for that second pick, second <laughs> round pick, third round pick. Talk, please talk these people off the ledge. Either I don't of think you, the Bears two cents. pick up the phone. <laughs> I don't think they do that. They're not. They're it's, they're not even willing thing, to have that conversation. It's if, it's if one thing to like if the draft day up. trade on day two with a division rival, like that's already a little weird. I think saying here here's the quarterback that could be your franchise yeah, guy. I don't. Within the don't, division was already one yeah. thing, Quasi. But now all of a sudden, yeah, a I, yeah, your quarterback to the division. But if they don't believe in him. Right. If they say, hey, we know he's not going to pan out. We, trust me, we saw him for five years straight. Yeah. We, we get it. Go ahead. Take this guy off my plate. <laughs> An indictment. That would be if that they let it. That would be if they indictment. pick up the phone. Or, you're going, wait sure, a minute. Right. <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> right. What's the catch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the catch? What do I need to know? Um, yeah. Back to Caleb here real quick as we kind of wrap this one up. Sam, I'm sure you want to move on. Mm -hmm. But I, I think compared to expectations this season heading in, granted, they were sky high. The dude definitely fell short this year, even though he didn't live up to a lot of expectations. I still think because of the sky high ceiling and the tools, he's going to be the number one pick, no matter what, no matter what the team is, yeah. because in this league, in the NFL, the NFL, every team is always going to be willing to bet on the tools and the traits, maybe more than any other sport or business out there. So um, I think, ceiling wise the tools the traits all that stuff he checks all those boxes even though he's coming in with maybe the stock moving down just a little bit again compared to where a lot of people had him coming into this year but yeah i think it goes i really do i think it goes caleb and then drake and Jaden in any in particular order there with washington and new england one two three but obviously free agency is going to have a huge domino effect huge snowball effect where justin fields goals mm -hmm. is going to play you know, a lot into this uh, whole draft situation and what the Vikings options are picking at 11. No doubt about it. And it's going to be like a nauseating cycle of leaks because yeah. the Bears are going to be trying to pump his value. Everybody else is going to be trying to tank his value. He's got character issues. He was bad at the combine interviews. He's full of himself or whatever. Um, and it's going to there's going to be a lot of competing narratives going on. The Bears are going to love Justin Fields. They hate Justin Fields. It's going to be crazy. Um, free agent defensive tackle targets when we return on the Minnesota football party. We are presented today by FanDuel Sportsbook. It's America's number one sportsbook, and this is the deal going on right now. You got two rounds of the NFL playoffs left. Don't miss out on championship game weekend and Super Bowl Sunday at FanDuel. Bet five, get 150. That's guaranteed money, win or lose. Bet five. Get 150 straight to your account. And with the 150, you can sprinkle that around however you want. A little bit on NBA, a little bit on NHL. You've got NFL futures. You've got parlays with the Parlay Hub at FanDuel. So many options, so many bets, every line, every league at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Check it out today. Get in the NFL 
wagering fun at FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. All right, we held this one over from Thursday, so this better be good. Free agency targets for the Vikings. Focus on defensive tackle today. Go back to previous episodes. Hear us talk about edge rusher and cornerback. We're heavily focused on the defense right now. Defensive tackle, interior rush, woeful for the Vikings this past year. You guys have had some good nerdy stats about how bad it was. Dean Lowry doesn't do anything and then gets hurt. Okay. Kyrie Tonga, huge tease, doesn't do anything. Um, Vikings are in a serious need of talent injection at this position. Luke Braun, give me a name. I, I think the name everybody's been saying is um, Tayer Tart, but I'll give you a couple of other interesting Good ones. Good answer. Good answer. Good uh, answer. Family I, Well, that's the one everybody's saying, or a lot of people are saying Christian Wilkins. He'll be the prize of the class, right? He'll be like the big the big one. And I think he'll be the guy that signs, you know, two seconds into the tampering window for way too much money. Like that, the market's going to make somebody overpay a lot for him, which, I mean, I, I love Christian Wilkins. It'd be super cool to bring him in but I don't want to make inefficient deals just to get the guy that's the name of, you know, not, not just to get the name, especially because this is a pretty cool class of uh, free agent defensive tackles. Javon Kinlaw is out there. Justin Matavuike is a really interesting one to me. I like a lot of these names, uh, so I don't need to go crazy for, for Christian Wilkins in particular. Would, would be sick. Don't need it. Don't need to pay a lot for it. Yeah, so I just pulled up the PFF's top 10 defensive tackle free agent list right before the show, and, and I'm not even joking when I say this. How do you only pick one guy from this list? Yeah, I would be sure. ecstatic. I would be Leonard ecstatic Williams, Chris Jones. With, with any single one of them. That's just how thirsty we are right now for any and every type of help along the trenches right now. And and that's even if they bring back Harrison Phillips. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. If you don't bring back Phillips, now you need – how many do you need? Two? Minimum? He's he's got one year left. So are you talking about cutting him? Well, I know there's a clean break this offseason, right? There's okay, a contract so out. There's a got contract it. out. They could save six and a half, seven and a half, somewhere in that range if they wanted to. I don't expect they will, but I know that's a talking point. That's all. So um yeah, if they wanted to make a clean break, they could. Obviously, like Luke said, you'd love to have uh Chris Jones or Christian Wilkins. In fact, Christian Wilkins, if you want to connect the dots to anyone, Flores was the head coach in Miami, right? When he drafted Wilkins top 15, now he's an absolute stud. So he makes the most sense as far as like a background standpoint. But again, like Luke said, I'm not trying to look back in three, four years and say, wow, we really overpaid for that one. Quasi and KOC have spent so much time and energy and effort cleaning up the mess that Rick Spillman left behind. I'm not trying to, again, kind of move one step forward, two steps back and, and, massively overpay as good as he has been massively overpay for one guy I, I think everybody knows you want to build through the draft if you're just a piece or two away sure go ahead shell out some big bucks for a uh you know a key guy at, at a position of need but all those top three four guys man uh Matabuke, baltimore i think they'll all cost luke you're the cap guy 20 million or more minimum and i wouldn't even be surprised if wilkins by the way just got tagged by miami and was off the market before it's all said and done. So I think the Vikings are probably looking for a little bit better bang for the buck. Um, maybe Quasey likes Spielman, likes to look for that guy coming off his first contract. Tier Tart, obviously the one everybody circles back to. I think he's only 26. Kind of a weird year. I didn't realize oh, this. DJ got, Reader. Yeah, DJ Reader coming off the injury. He was an absolute stud. Um, but Tier Tart can play the zero, the one tech. I didn't realize this. He was cut by the Titans and then picked up by the Texans. And I remember yeah. from our defensive end edge conversation mm -hmm. that they still got to sign Jonathan Greener as well. So maybe they don't have the the goods or the money, although C.J. Stroud, your quarterback's on a rookie deal. But maybe they don't have the, the assets or resources to sign both those guys. But uh, he would make a lot of sense. Um, but again, any of these guys, I would absolutely love. Any of them would be an upgrade from the Dean Lowry's and the James Lynch's and the Tonga's, in my opinion, when I'm just looking at this top 10 list. Yeah, DJ Reader, coming off the quad injury, maybe he, he can be had at a discount. I mean, he was playing lights out before the injury. He would be a huge help. Um, I'm trying to see who else just coming through this list. Uh, Grover Stewart, look at Indy's EPA splits, run splits when he was in versus when he was out. Top half mm. of the league when he was in dead last when he wasn't on the field with Indy. So he would be a huge upgrade. I don't know. Again, though, if you don't bring back Phillips, is only one of these guys enough? 
Um, and then are you pigeonholing yourself to go edge defensive tackle, vice versa, at 11 and 42 now? That that would be a tough situation as well. So, yeah, spend some money, though. Go get one of them. I, I would think uh, T.R. Tart would make the most sense when you're trying to connect the dots. Yeah, I, I like Tart. I like the value there. He's coming off a weird year, but he's got a ton of upside. And I honestly thought he was monstrous uh, during joint practices. Braun, were you there? Oh, the he was a I, I am joint. familiar with the Bradbury rep that everyone went crazy about, but he did get cut in the middle of the season, so I don't know how, how important yeah, do we know how what should was latch up on to the that? thing we saw in person. Do we know what was up with that? I mean, he was a starter at training camp going in. Yeah. Well, let me see if I can I, figure he, it out. He got I mean, transition tagged or something, and I think maybe he was unhappy. Don't quote me on that. I think I remember hearing that, though, going in, he that he wanted a new be, contract. He, Effort, he seems attitude to be easily issues. disgruntled. Easily okay. disgruntled would be my my phrase around him. That's Got fine. It. If you sign him to a one-year deal, there's no harm in that. I think there's a lot of upside. Another guy, this is not the sexiest name by any means, but I'm trying to think economically here. Mm -hmm. Sheldon Rankins. Very imperfect, but here's what he does. I feel like Billy Bean in Moneyball. What yeah. does he do? Get on base. What does Sheldon <laughs> Rankins do? He pressures the quarterback. He pressures the quarterback. And what do the Vikings need? They need pressure. If you if you can't tackle as well in the run game, I'll take I'll I'll live with it. If you can get after the quarterback once in a while, and that's what Sheldon Rankins can do. So at his cost, I'd be okay with that. I think there's going to be value available with again a very top heavy, talented top part of that class. Wait a couple of days in free agency and get someone like Sheldon Rankins. Again, these are going to be short term deals. I don't think Quazy's going to dole out a four-year deal for, for a guy. Maybe I'm wrong. But it feels like if you want to get two, you can probably on one or two-year deals. Yeah, give me two. Just with the Flores system and scheme, the way it's built anyways, give me two guys, a little bit better bang for the buck for sure. Build up that depth and rotation a little bit more. Um, I'll never forget it. Senior Bowl, I want to say it was 2016, maybe 2017 when Rankins came out. Uh, it was either day two or day three of practice. Unblockable unguardable absolutely fell in love with him over one practice okay maybe a little overreaction he ends up going top 15 maybe not looking back worthy of the top 15 pick but nonetheless I think he steadily progressed year by year and I know he's getting a little bit older now but um I, I like that one that would be a a solid one without doing a lot of digging and background on him and and you know how he's been the last couple mm -hmm. of years but that one makes sense uh what about Michael Pierce get the gang back hey. together man <laughs> let's go hey Hey, we got a new coach here now, man. Everything's different. You love the facilities. You you love the the school districts for the kids, right? Come on. We back, only got man. one year with him. We only got one year. We got Rob. That was that was such we a bummer, Rob. dude. That was it was he was playing so well in that year. That was such a bummer to only get one year out of How that. How old whole is thing. he now? Really ha half a year, really. Um Yeah. I bet he's like 29, 30. Uh, oh, really? he what is. I thought he was 28. Older than that. Uh, where'd you go? He had one full contract and then one part of a contract. And then the Ravens are his third team. What the Anyone? Heck? Where'd he go? Yeah. Sorry. Hold on. I, I thought he was number 10 on this list and now I'm at 10 and I don't see him. Um, oh. boy, boy, this is a deep, he signed. Deep oh, he did. That's why he's yeah, off this list. He signed now. with the Ravens. He's back. Dude, he was just on this list like last week. I swear. But yeah, yeah he signed <laughs> on in like, Recently, January 5th. Speaking of random signings it. here, um, the Lions just picked up Zach Ertz for the conference championship. Did I see that right? Or is that a fake? Zach Ertz and conference championships oh. proven. Okay. Is that a Laporta insurance or is that just trying to make the rich richer? Yeah. Uh, Brock Wright even had a big splash play for like 30, 40 yard catch. Was it yesterday? Laporta looks Two healthy. That's probably just, I mean, why not? Right. Yeah. Why not? Get some playoff yeah. experience. Like yeah. some deep, like none of these guys have been that deep except golf. Like, let's get some experience in there. Yeah, I'm I'm saying it now. The Lions are going to win on Sunday. Hey, the Lions. They are have going to. to win. It's the Kirk Cousins curse. They didn't lose to Kirk Cousins. 49ers did. This is already written by God. Wow. So what what are we thinking? Lions, Ravens. Yep. So I think that's at, I was on FanDuel this morning. I think that's at like plus 410, 420. The wife just landed in Vegas this morning. She's there for the week for some work. Let's um, go. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll take a peek at work. that. See what the work situation, see what the Venmo situation looks like. Beautiful. Well, again, 
Once we uh, conclude our round robin betting contest, I'll be in Iowa. The winner of the contest will get a Super Bowl bet. Um, and the results this past week, Arif Hassan, another winner. He took me down. I went over to Arif hit on Christian McCaffrey anytime TD. That's all he needed, just one win to get the W over yours truly. So he's 2-0. and Luke Brown and Luke Goodman are 1-1. One and one. They can tie Arif next week and win via tiebreaker. So you got to value overall dollars earned. I'll get those ta- those exact standings out to you before Thursday where we will wager again for the championship round of the NFL playoffs. Ravens taking on the Chiefs, 49ers, and Detroit Lions. Uh, we'll preview those and have much more Vikings talk on Thursday's episode of the Minnesota Football Party. Find us on the Locked on Vikings audio feed or here streaming on Locked on Sports Minnesota's YouTube channel. Please subscribe. He's Luke Inman. He's Luke Braun. Hear him on Locked on Vikings. Hear Luke Inman on the Locked on Wolves, Locked on Vikings, Locked on Twins, Locked on Gophers, Postcast, and I'm Sam Ekstrom. Uh, talk to you tomorrow on the Ron Johnson Show here on Locked on Sports Minnesota. So long from the Minnesota Football Party.